Hello! That was horrible. <laughs> How are we all doing? Today we're gonna to be chatting about my August wrap up. Now I am recording this on the 29th. Possibly could finish the book I'm currently reading by the end of August, but I really don't think I am going to considering I haven't actually read any of it yet. <laughs> and it's like 700 pages. So I don't think it's gonna happen. I think we're safe to record the wrap up now. And I just wanna say, this may be one of my best reading months ever. I haven't gone back and looked through my average ratings of previous months, but let me just tell you now, I've got a pretty high average rating. I had quite a lot of five stars this month. Particularly towards the latter half of this month, I just really enjoyed everything that I was reading. You know, I read, we'll get into this, but I read quite a few books this month. So it's one thing to have a, a quite a high average rating when you've read maybe five books in a month, but when it starts getting over 10, I feel like you've got to kind of have a really good reading month in order for the number to skew highly. Words aren't coming out of my mouth properly today. <laughs> Apparently. So yeah, what we're gonna do as always is go through my reading statistics and then we'll chat through the disappointment, surprises and hits of the month. This month I read 13 books, which I'm really happy with. I feel like that's a really good number. When I look at my Goodreads, I'll put a picture in like the number of books I've read each month throughout the years. 13 is a pretty consistent like high month for me. So I feel really happy that I got to 13 books this month. The 24 hour readathon I did with my patrons is definitely what got me there because I read four books in one day. I read a total pages of 3,759, which works out to an average pages per day of 121 pages which I am very happy with I mean bear in mind one of those days in one day I read 800 pages so as always my reading it's not linear <laughs> I've really went a couple of days after that without reading anything so yeah it, it definitely is up and down but 121 pages on average per day an average book length of 289 so yeah like that is on the lower side I'd say anything below 300 means I read a couple of like novellas short quick books but that's definitely what I did for the 24 hour readathon in order to get through a larger amount of books my average rating was was a 4.3 <laughs> you deserve an Oscar you actually deserve an award that is so high what is my average rating forever overall like in terms of when I've been using Goodreads let's have a look because it does tell you 3.68 average rating overall so yeah definitely high <laughs> for me. I'm so happy. Yeah, I had a lot of five stars this month. I wouldn't say a lot of them were like favourite books of all time, but they were just solid five stars, like five stars that I really enjoyed. And the average time that books had been on my TBR was six and a half months each. We had a couple books, I think like two or three books this month, that they had spent no time on my TBR, were books that I literally just decided to read or had literally just bought. Um, and then we had some books that had been on there for 20 months. So it all averages out to 6.5. Okay, let's get into the graphs. So in terms of ratings, I had six five stars. <laughs> I know. <laughs> This is a story about a girl named Lucky. Six five stars, four four stars, two 3.5 stars, and one three star. My lowest rated book this month was a three star, which is pretty great. That's pretty great. I'm very happy with that. In terms of how I read the books, two were solely audiobooks, six were solely physical, and five were mixed media, which meant I either had the physical and audiobook or the ebook and the audiobook. In terms of genre, I haven't looked at this yet. Oh, we have a very wide mix of genres this month. I had one contemporary, two fantasy, one graphic novel, one historical, one horror, one magical realism, three mystery, two non-fiction, and one thriller. That's so good. I love when I have a wide mix of genres. That's always my goal. I love reading a wide mix of genres. I often find the months where I read the most are the ones where I really change up what genres I'm reading. The months where I read less are where I have ended up through no fault of anyone, just like the way it's worked out, reading a lot of one genre. Sometimes it can be fun, like sometimes I have a lot of fun reading lots of mysteries, like in October. October, November time. Yeah, no, I love that mix of genres. In terms of audience, I read five adult, two middle grade and six YA. This has probably been one of my highest months for reading YA this year. I haven't read a lot. Huh. <laughs> Maybe I should pick up some more YA because I've been reading less and less YA. Like if we look at if I go to my year tracker, I've read 55% adult and 39% YA. But having such a good month reading so much YA makes me think, hmm. Interesting. Then in terms of how I acquired the books, four were gifts, 
Four were books I'd bought myself, one was from Audible, two were sent to me by the publisher, and two were from Script. In terms of series stats, you're all gonna be proud of me. Five were books that were partway through series, and eight were standalones. No series, oh wait, no, I did, no, hang on. <laughs> I filed one wrong. <laughs> Oh, I was really gonna talk myself up then about how I didn't start any series this month. Four were partway through series, one was a first in a series, and eight were standalone. I did start one series this month, which was King of Scars, which I'm not gonna be talking about because it doesn't fall into any of our categories. Hopefully I'll get to Rule of Wolves before the year is out to cancel that series out. And then finally, in terms of author status, one was a debut, nine were authors I'd read from before, and three were new to me. So that's another sign. Like, I've had a really good month when I'm reading authors that I've read from before and loved. So maybe that's something I should prioritize as well. I love checking with my stats every month, even if we're always just reading the same stuff out, because I love seeing what that means for my reading, you know? Okay, let's talk about the disappointments, surprises, and hits of the month. So disappointments, I only have two. <laughs> Because obviously the lowest rated book I had this month was a three star, which is not really low. So let's talk about the three star first. That is The Forest of Stolen Girls by June Her. This was my book club pick for July. This is a historical book set in 1426 in Korea. We're following these two sisters who are reunited. They've been living apart and they're trying to solve the mystery of what has happened to their father. He recently returned to this town to investigate this mystery of these girls going missing. And this was kind of, I think, a disappointing book for a lot of us. I found it very predictable <laughs> what was happening in this book. I called it right from the beginning when we met a certain character that it was going to be them behind everything and I remember being like, I'm going to be so pissed if it's them. <laughs> like, it's just so obvious. I was angry. I was angry. And I found it just a bit boring. I just wasn't excited to read it. I read it because it was a book club pick and I had to read it. But I was never, you know, looking forward to reading it. I will say something that I loved about this book was June Ha's obvious desire to really accurately portray this time period in history. And it seemed like she'd done so much research and it was so like, I really understood this time period, which I've never read from before in any culture, really. Like the 1400s is not an era of history of time that I really have read before. And it just felt so deep and like a real like honored look at this time in history. So I would be interested in reading more June Her, whether it's The Science of the Bones or like a new release that comes out at some point. I would be interested in trying this author again, but yeah, this was just a bit disappointing. And I feel like the book club, we always, we're very picky, the book club on Patreon. Like we have high expectations. We're reading Final Girls at the moment for the August one. Our live show is this weekend and there's already been a lot of mixed opinions and I'm excited. Once I finish the book I'm currently reading, I'm gonna read Final Girls next and I'm excited to see where I fall <laughs> on the opinionated scale. Then this was like, only a disappointment because I expect this to be five stars so a cool time and it's The Deep by River Solomon. It's inspired by a song by, I think it's Clipping, the band. This is a short novella about the descendants of black female slaves who were thrown overboard, who were pregnant and they turn into these kind of mermaid creatures and I read this for the 24 hour readathon. You can check out my whole vlog for it here. To summarise, <laughs> The one thing that I kept saying about this book is that it felt like I'd gone to the National Gallery, like I was in there looking at all the classical paintings and I was looking at one and I could tell like this is a feat of its field, right? This is a work of art, this is outstanding. But like, I can't see it beyond it as a work of art, right? Like I want my books to have, not like a level of imperfection about them, right? But just something about them that makes you go, oh yeah, like, oh. You know? I am really uncomfortable right now and I'm feeling like I wanna get up and leave. You know, <laughs> how to describe it? There's not a word, it's like that X factor, you know? And this was like, probably in terms of craft, in terms of storytelling, in terms of depth of meaning, higher levels than some books I give five stars. But I couldn't get beyond viewing it as a work of art. I, I, there was a, always a distance between me and the book. I am so interested in reading River Solomon's other stuff. I really wanna read Sorrowland by them. Maybe like a longer book would benefit because I also feel like this should have been 40 to 80 pages longer. It was about 160 pages. I think it should have been maybe 200 to 250 to talk about everything we wanted to. There was a romance that I didn't feel like was fully explored. There was uh, some perspectives. We follow mainly the perspective of the historian who carries the trauma for the entire group. We had some of the modern day historians, sorry. We had some perspectives from past historians and I just didn't feel like there was enough time to really get into the depth on that 
than I would have wanted. Other months, if I had read this, this would not be in the disappointments category because, you know, <laughs> there would be other stuff replacing it. But I just didn't read um, anything really bad this month. So I just thought I'd mention it because I did expect it to be like my favorite book of all time, basically. surprises. First one I want to mention is the finale to a series that I have not mentioned loads on my channel. I've kind of just been reading it away, you know, away from the videos. But I read the finale to the Small Spaces trilogy. No, quad, quad, qu quartlet? Quart, no, quad, uh, something. <laughs> This is the final one, which is Empty Smiles. This was my favorite in the series. I really loved this. Now I can't say much about the plot because obviously like it would spoil the first three books. But this is a middle grade horror series by Catherine Arden who wrote one of my favorite series of all time, the Barry and the Nightingale series. And once I read the first book, I knew like this wasn't gonna be my favorite thing from Catherine Arden. When she brings out her next like YA or adult, hopefully like the Barry and the Nightingale series, like I reckon that would be my favorite. But I like that she did this little project. We're following friends who keep coming into uh, contact with this horror figure they call the Smiling Man. And he takes different forms in each book and he kind of terrorizes them and tries to like capture their souls. It's essentially what his MO is. <laughs> And it's them beating him and like trying to beat him in each book. And this final one is set at Fairground, which is such a fun setting for like a children's horror book. I think it's such like an evocative atmosphere. And I just really loved the writing and I really loved the characters in this one. The pacing really worked for me. The ending was a bit rushed, but I just had the best time reading this one. I'm just glad I finished another series. Ticked another series off the list. And um, yeah, it was definitely my favorite in a series as a whole. And then I have to say Killjoy by Holly Jackson. Now this is our beginning talking about all the five stars. I put two of them in the surprises and the rest we're gonna talk about in hits. This is a prequel to the Good Girls Guide to Murder series. I would recommend reading this in between books one and two. Read the main first book first, then read this in between books one and two. I think that's the best time to read it. This is before the events of the crazy series and it's just Pip, our main character, and her friends holding like a murder mystery party and it's like a lot of fun and games. It's gonna be good and we're all gonna have fun! And I was just so surprised at how much I enjoyed this and gave it five stars. Like of course I was expecting great things but it's like a very short novella, it's like 130 pages. Holly Jackson always knows how to just bring a bit of fun. She always knows how to just bring that little, little bit of fun, like just a little bit. So it's this a mystery party and they've obviously bought a pack and like they're going through the pack and you'll see it on screen like the graphics of this page gives you your alibi, this page gives us our cast of characters, this gives you instructions of what to do in the next round. Like I said I think you want to read the first book to get a few of the easter eggs but then it really sets up well some characters for you to be introduced them a little bit before the second books comes up because the second book for me was a four star but I feel like perhaps if I'd got to know some of the characters that are shown in that a little bit better, just a tiny bit better like you do in this book, I would have enjoyed it even more. So I would definitely recommend reading it in that order. So just seeing those characters, it was just a lot of fun. And then my final surprise was The Wintering Hymn Mystery by Anthony Berkeley. I just posted one of my favorite videos ever, which was solving this mystery. The comments on it have been absolutely amazing. Like you, your comments have made my day, but YouTube ain't happy and it's like nine out of 10 performing out of my videos. So if you want to go watch a video I'm very proud of, go watch the video where I solved this mystery or at least try to. I tried to solve the mystery. This is like a classic British crime book, you know, set at this stately home. We have this locked room mystery where these characters are hosting this seance. It's a lot of rich people at home, basically. They're hosting the seance and one of the, the uh, guests goes missing during the seance. I was just shocked at how much I enjoyed this. This is probably my first classic book mystery other than Agatha Christie and I loved this. I liked this more than the other like stately home. The stately home's not the right word. What's the word for like mansions? Manners. <laughs> Um, books from Agatha Christie that I've read. I much preferred this one and I, I really loved the tone of writing. It's very humorous. I was reading the in introduction and it was talking about how the author is known for being like funny, like injecting humor into his mysteries. And I was like, yeah, sure. Okay, <laughs> like fine. Sure, Jan. But I read it and it felt modern in the humor and the, the style of writing. And I thought we had a really big cast of characters as you'll see if you go watch that video, I fan cast. <laughs> I found cast the book with different actors and actresses. All of the characters had really fun dynamics and brought something really fun to the table. So yeah, I was not expecting to love this as much as I did, but I'm definitely gonna try out some more Anthony Berkeley in the future. And 
then finally, time for our hits. We have four other five stars to mention in this video. So let's chat about the other two five stars I had for the 24-hour readathon, which was a very successful reading. Readathon for me, obviously. We have Cracked Up to Be by Courtney Summers. Now this book inducted Courtney Summers finally into my Hall of Fame favorite authors. I loved this. This is Courtney Summers' debut, and I just literally still can't get over the fact this was written in 2008. Like, I can't get over it. Like, if you ask me to get over it, I say no. Like, <laughs> it's just impossible. I loved this. We're following Parker, who was previously, like, she was the head of cheer. She was dating the hottest guy at school she was the it girl and then something happened and she fell apart she started drinking at school a lot she almost got kicked out she's still in danger of not graduating in this book and we're f slowly finding out what happened to her to make this happen and just the journey that we go on throughout this book it's so good <laughs> the way that you know Courtney Summers crafts this character who is not there to be likable and I love that and I love that I thought the look at mental health and the way that we treat people in a situation like Parker was very interesting. It made me think a lot about when I had friends going through similar situations, like at secondary school and stuff, how they were treated and viewed and how society viewed them. It's just so good. And I'm very excited to now to read all of Courtney Summer's backlist. I have quite a few to get through still. <laughs> and then I suppose this was a surprise as well, actually. We have Delicates by Brenna Thumner. So I read Sheets. I gave that like a four star. I enjoyed it. It was a fine graphic novel. This is the sequel to it. Uh, we're following Marjorie, whose mother passed away uh, a few years ago, a year or so, two years ago. And her grief is a big plot in the first book. In this book, we meet, is it Erica? Eliza, sorry. We meet Eliza, um, who is this character here, who is like socially awkward, I think is coded as autistic in the book. Um, she has a special interest in photography, particularly pho pho photographing ghosts. Um, this is a middle grade book. And I just thought, A, it's beautifully illustrated. Like I love Brenna Thumler's illustration style, like, and the tones, like the pinks and the purples and the blues. It's really a story about like, like not bullying and treating people with kindness and looking past your own insecurities to support others right so much like I remember being at school and like you're so consumed with how you you're perceived by others that you don't then break the mold to help other people you know you're so I worried how you're perceived by your friends or the people that you look up to or admire that you don't break the mold to help others so you know what this says about depression and sadness and difficult times for kids I think is so so beneficial and important so yeah I was so surprised actually by how much I loved this and especially like because Sheets was fine like I enjoyed it I tend to give all graphic novels like four stars <laughs> at least because I just love the experience of reading them but this was really special and I feel like this is such an important book for kids to have the option of reading. Then another hit that I just read was I'm Glad My Mum Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I listened to the audiobook for this and I just absolutely loved it. I mean, obviously everyone's talking about it, so you don't need me to say much and everyone's loving it, but just her honesty of her life, of her talking about the abuse that she has suffered by her mum throughout most of the book, you're in that, you're in the moment with her of her loving her mum and looking up to her mum and her mum being her whole world. And you know, towards the end of the book, you start to see the moment that that broke. And it's very heartbreaking because you've been, it's not like the book is necessary, the book doesn't tell the moments with hindsight. It tells the moments that she has with her mum suffering the abuse at her hands with the perspective that young Jeanette had. And so it's very heartbreaking to kind of go through that moment with her. And it's very, very raw and honest and you know, not just with the situation with her mum, but the situation that she had at Nickelodeon working, for example. I hope that this will be the start of, you know, getting the ball rolling, of exposing the, you know, terrible stuff that probably happened behind the scenes at Nickelodeon. I will say, Jeanette is very open about her eating disorder in this, and I, I don't tend to read stuff, I guess, that I would get triggered by, but I think I do have to be careful sometimes when watching or consuming, you know, watching TV shows or consuming media where uh, there's a character whose mental health is not 100 in some way. Uh, if it's something that I feel I relate to, sometimes it can restart ways of thinking for me. So if you have suffered from anorexia or bulimia, be careful <laughs> going into this book because I wasn't quite expecting the uh, rawness of honesty and it's like a lot to read and you have to, like, I had to be very 
you know, conscious that I didn't slip into certain ways of thinking. So yeah, I will just say that. It was va very valuable, but I think on a personal level, just like protect yourself, read trigger warnings, read some reviews just so you know how honest it is, because it's very honest in descriptions and depictions. So yeah, just be aware of that. But I loved this. I mean, I could make a whole video talking about it, but I don't know if we need another person making a video talking about it, because everyone has. But it was just such a wonderful, you know, such a wonderful, honest read. And I'm very excited for Jet McCurdy's fiction, which she says she's now writing, and that's what she wants to do, is write fiction. So I'm really, really excited for that. And then my last final five stars, I won't spend too long talking about this, because it wasn't like everything I was hoping for, was The Man Who Died Trias by Richard Osman. Obviously, Thursday Murder Club, my favorite book of last year. This wasn't that, but I still really loved it. We're following a group of friends who live at this retirement village, and they used to solve mysteries, like cold cases, you know, try and solve them. Now, you know, mysteries land on their doorstep. I've got a whole vlog on this, <laughs> so I will just say that I love the characters. I love a good mainstream mystery. Like, anything that is a mainstream mystery nowadays, I just love, because, like, let's do it. Do you know what I mean? I love that that is becoming a Thing. Just like the shit that these characters get themselves into whilst, you know, being pensioners and like just doing everything. Like I love seeing older characters, I really do. And I feel like there's a trend now with older characters in mysteries because of this, because of the success of this. I'd love to see older characters in other genres as well. Like there's been a massive boom of older characters in murder mysteries, like solving mysteries because of the success of this. I'd love to see that translate into other genres as well. But yeah, I didn't love this as much as the first one, but I still loved it. <laughs> and I'm very excited for the third one to come out in I think a month, less than a month maybe, sometime in September. So so there we have it everyone, that was my wrap up for the month of August. Let me know how your reading went down below, I would love to know if you had a good reading month, not a good reading month, let me know your disappointments, surprises and hits, um, and let me know what you thought of any of the books that I read this month, and what you thought of them, I would love to know. If you've gotten to the end of the video, comment, just comment a star emoji, because this was a five star month for me. Comment the star emoji below if you've gotten to the end. Thank you guys so much for your support, kind comments, you know, all your love as always. I appreciate it so, so much. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.